Let's plan a short cross-country flight using the Flight Insight VFR cross-country nav log file, which you can download and use in Excel. The link for that is here and in the description. Our flight today will start in Ocean City, Maryland, KOXB, and end at nearby Accomack County, KMFV, on the eastern shore of Virginia. For our sectional chart, we're going to use Sky Vector, but you can use ForeFlight or paper charts or whatever else suits you. We'll input our departure and destination and get the pink line showing our course, which is a southwesterly one. Given this direction of flight, we'll choose a cruising altitude of 4,500 and check as we go if that's appropriate. There are some restricted areas shown on this chart, but as long as we stay up above them, we should be fine. At 50 miles, this is a perfect flight to do for our first solo cross country in pursuit of the private pilot. We'll begin by selecting some waypoints along the route. The first waypoint will be our top of climb, which we'll compute now. Our aircraft performance will determine where this point is, and performance is highly dependent on atmospheric conditions. So let's have a look on aviationweather.gov at the METAR at Ocean City. We'll copy this and bring it onto the back side of our nav log in the weather information section. Then we'll do the same for the METAR at our destination. The winds are gusting pretty strongly, almost certainly too much for any student solo flight, but we'll go with it for this demo. Now, for winds aloft, we'll pull up the data table for the northeast and find our closest station, which is Richmond, RIC. That's showing winds at 3,000 of 290 degrees at 22 knots. If we're being exact, we could interpolate between the 3 and 6,000 foot reports, but let's keep it simple and stick with 3,000. So in first determining our top of climb point, we're going to have a look at time, fuel, and distance to climb chart in our POH for the Cessna 172. Cruising at 4,500, it'll take us just over 9 miles to reach that in over 7 minutes. The climb speed will be about 75 knots. Let's get these things entered into our nav log. First, our cruising altitude of 4,500 feet. Next, our leg distance, just a bit more than 9 miles, so we'll say 10. Then we'll say 8 minutes ETE. So let's pick out a spot on Sky Vector along our route that's 10 miles from departure. We just click once along the pink line and select the GPS coordinates that that brings up. It shows that segment as being 11 miles, so let's click and drag the point and move it a little closer to the departure, giving us 10 miles. This puts the point just inside the opposite edge of Chincoteague Bay. Let's pick some more points. The next one, we'll use the large runway layout at the NASA facility Wallops. We'll want to stay just to the right of that. That segment, from the top of climb to Wallops, is 17 miles. So we start getting these points into our checkpoints column. For the final waypoint, we'll use the intersection of our flight course with Route 13 at the town of Nelsonia, a 9 mile segment. This can also serve as our top of descent point, where we'll start down from 4,500 to pattern altitude at Accomac, which is a 14 mile segment. Now, we can use VORs to fix ourselves on each of these points along the route. The first VOR we'll use is Salisbury. Here's a nifty way to find the radial using Sky Vector. We're just going to add Salisbury identifier SBY as a point along our route just prior to the waypoint. The segment shows a pink line running through the compass rows off of which we can read our radial. So we'll put the VOR identifier SBY into our nav log, which has a cool feature which generates the Morse identifier in the next row based on the letters we entered in. This is what we'll actually hear when we ID the station. We'll also put in the station frequency and radial for this point. We can find the other VOR radials for the other waypoints, but for those, it seems like the Snow Hill VOR is a better choice, so we use that. For the next column, we input winds aloft, direction, and velocity. Next is the true airspeed column. For the climb portion, we figured out from the POH that this was going to be about 75 knots. For the cruise portion, we turn to the cruise performance page of the POH and find that at 4,000 feet at standard temp and 2400 RPM, we can expect 108 knots. Next is the true course. On a paper sectional, you could figure this out with a plotter. We don't have that on Sky Vector, but we know our magnetic course from what's written along the pink lines, 229 degrees. So we could take that and back into our true course. Magnetic course is true course plus or minus the magnetic variation. What's the magnetic variation? We could look at an isogonic line nearby, or just draw ourselves a segment along the line of longitude, which is straight up and down along a true course of 360 degrees. This tells us the magnetic course is 12 degrees, so we've had to add 12 degrees to our 360 true course to get our magnetic course of 12. The variation is plus 12 here, 
with a magnetic course of 229, we have to add 12 from a true course of 217 to get there. I know this is all a bit backwards, but hopefully you're with me. Next, we need to figure out the wind correction angle. We have the true course and airspeed, which is what's needed for this. We'd use the E6B to figure this out, and I'll spare you the step-by-steps on that, but you can find our tutorials on E6B usage in our video list. Finding the wind correction angle for both the climb and cruise portions of the flight give us our true headings. From those, we need to add the variation, which we found before was plus 12, to get magnetic heading. For deviations, we'd look to the compass correction card, but we're going to assume it's zero here, so we can move our magnetic heading to our compass heading, what we're actually going to fly. Next, we'll input our ground speeds, which we also use the E6B to calculate when we were finding our wind correction angles. With those in hand and the distance of each leg, we can compute the time and route for each segment. The E6B can also be used for this, or you can just use your own calculation using the formula distance divided by speed equals time and route. Adding up all the times gives us the total estimated time of 32 minutes for this 50 mile trip. Now, I know we've glossed over a bunch of things on this Navlog, but hopefully this serves as a jumping off point for you all to go download this document in Excel at the links here and work on your own flights. We also have a full tutorial, which is over an hour and glosses over absolutely nothing, which you can also check out in our video list. Have fun planning.